Hello and welcome to video module 2, Research Databases. In this video module, we, we will be looking at the research databases to which IS Manila has subscriptions. And we'll look at the differences between using databases and using the free web, Google, and things like that. Um, before we get into that, let's take a look at the way that you will be accessing this week's or this module's assessment tasks and assignment. So you click on Research Methods Bootcamp and this here is Module 2 Research Databases. Now there will be this video in here embedded but it's not embedded yet since I'm recording it right now. So what you should do before you watch any more of this video, you should pause the video, click on the Module 2 Task button and that will open up this uh, module to assessment assignment and what you'll notice if you look down here is you really have to watch the video in order to answer and complete the assessment tasks so have this form open up in a tab and then have the video open up in another tab so that you can pause the video at the appropriate times come over to the form and complete the tasks as you work your way through the video so let's get back to the website now, it is important that you have the IS Manila HSMC website bookmarked somewhere so that you can easily access it, especially this research page, because right here is the headquarters for all of our research here at ISM. We've got the library catalog, and then down here we've got all of the databases to which we subscribe. So the way to think about databases is, imagine IS Manila subscribed to print copies, print versions of all different kinds of magazines, hundreds and well thousands really of magazines, newspapers, reference book articles, things like that. And imagine that they were all in the HMC at once. The, it would be stacked floor to ceiling with print, magazines, newspapers, journals, and reference books. So instead of that, we actually have access to all of that right here online. Now the difference between database information and information that's available freely online on via Google and other search engines is that you have to pay to access all of this stuff. And so because you have to pay to access all of this stuff, it's not for the most part, freely available on Google. So if you only use Google in your research searches, you'll be missing, I would say, 70 to 80 percent of the academically appropriate and useful information that you have access to. And so the things, the material that is in these research databases includes magazines like Time, National Geographic, Chemistry Review, The Lancet, Medical Journals, all kinds of stuff which do not make their uh, articles freely available on the web. We also have uh, a, a database called Teen Health and Wellness which has really excellent teen um, articles about your health needs and health questions and all kinds of other things which we have to actually pay to access. So the biggest vendor that we have here is called EBSCO and so EBSCO is basically a company and they provide access to all different subject areas, articles from magazines, newspapers, journals, but reference books, and entire full text books. Now, so EBSCO, if you are here at school and you click on any of the EBSCO links, boom, you just go right there, no problem. However, if you're at home, you can't just click on it and get in. It will ask you for a username and password. So you need to actually click here where it says for home access, click here. This will take you to a document that has all of our usernames and passwords for these databases that we pay for. You have to be logged in at home to your, to your IS Manila Google account in order to see this document. I have divided up the databases that we have into subject specific uh, sections. So this is just general magazines, newspapers, reference book articles about all different kinds of topics. Pretty much any research need that you might have there's some something about them in here. Student Research Center, Mass Ultra, Newspaper Source. We also could subscribe to Newsweek Magazine Online, which you need a username and password for even here at school. Ebooks. Ebook collection has ebooks about all different kinds of subject areas. You can actually click on a type of subject, and then you've got entire books just like the ones that you could get here in the HSMC but they're completely digital. 
uh, current issues, health, database articles, literature, science, and social studies. You can actually open up each of these subject-specific databases and search them individually, or what I usually do is just click here to search multiple EBSCO databases at once. And then you can just check which ones you want to search. So let's say I'm looking for articles about zoology and zoos. Yep, I'll check this one, Mass Ultra. It's got a little something about everything. Definitely want some ebooks. Primary search is elementary age articles. Don't need that. I'm not doing any current topics. Don't need an encyclopedia. Don't need health or history or literary. Maybe newspapers. Professional development and Eric for teachers. Computer science is no. Science, yes. And then ebook high school collection, sure. And then I go click continue. I can click show all and it shows me which databases I'm currently searching. I might default to advanced search, but generally I just type in something from this first initial screen. And before I click search, I always make sure to limit my results to full text. If I don't do that, it's possible that it will give me some titles of articles that I could find on my own, but they don't actually have access to. That's not going to help me. So I always choose full text. Maybe I want to do, uh, I don't want any articles earlier than 2010, maybe. So I could do a date range. And that's usually about all that I do. And there are other ways you can limit your searches as well. So I've got 33 results. If I did that into a Google search, zoology and zoos, I'd probably get millions of results. So this enables me to have just fewer things to look through. I can click on an article. I can read the entire thing. And then over here on the left, I have a few choices. I can print the article. I can email it. I could save it if I actually signed in and created a username and password for myself. I could actually do that each time and then I would be able to save articles from search to search session. Um, the one thing I do want to show you is if you, and as you should, create a Google Doc when you're starting a big research project, I like to create a Google Doc and I just start putting in links to various resources that I think I might be using. Um, so I can put in URLs, websites, and things like that. But if you want to do that for database articles, you cannot just go up here to the top, choose the URL, and paste it. This is a specific URL just for this search, and it's not going to work in a couple of weeks when you come back to it. If you want a link that will work in a couple of weeks in an EBSCO database, you actually click this little link here. It's a permalink. Click that. That is what you can paste into your Google Doc so that you can get back to it later. Um, I can also download the article. This is a PDF one, so I can download it. And then I could even upload it into my Google Drive. So there's a lot of options there. And that's pretty much it for EBSCO. It's fairly straightforward, but it's super helpful. Every single research need that I have, I always use EBSCO. There's always something that will help me since we have all of these different subject areas covered. So pause your video here and then open up your Google form, which looks like this. You can go ahead and fill in your name and study hall block and then just the question about how often or have you used the databases before. And so now I'm going to show you the questions that you will need to answer in the blanks below. Question number four. Search any of the EBSCO databases for an article about something you are currently studying. It can be in any class, any subject, doesn't matter, but something you're currently studying. In the answer box for question number four, you should include the title of the article, the title of the journal, book, or newspaper in which it was originally published, and the year of publication. An example that you would paste or copy into question four's answer box is below. The Shrinking World of Penguins is the name of the article. National Wildlife Journal is the magazine. And 2011 is the publication date. And you can pause the video while you work on this task. And then restart the video when you have completed it. 
Moving on. JSTOR. JSTOR is another database, and this database actually has almost entirely academic uh, professional journals. So this, these are typically higher level articles. You don't have Time Magazine, News, Newsweek, that kind of thing. It's more professional journals such as Chemistry Review or The Lancet, Medical Journal, things like that. Um, super helpful for EEs especially. If you're here at school, again, you just click on JSTOR and you're in and you should create a username and password for yourself so that you can save your searches from you know, day to day, week to week. If you're at home, however, you have to click here, which will give you the proper link. So you can't just click JSTOR at home. It'll just go to JSTOR.org, and it will not give you the same kind of access that you will need at home. So you have to click here to get the document that has the correct JSTOR link. Then you log in with your username and password, and you'll have the same kind of access you do when you're at school. And JSTOR looks pretty similar. Uh, I might go to advanced search right away. I usually do that on JSTOR. So let's say again I'm looking for my zoology and zoos. And I want to say include only content I can access because more even than EBSCO, this will give you lots of links to just the titles of articles and where you can, what journal they were in, but you can't actually get them. So I always check this box. And I don't mind if they link me to external articles that are outside of the JSTOR website. So I have that box checked as well. Uh, I almost always do a date range in JSTOR because JSTOR has articles all the way back from the 1920s, and it's very much of a historical archive of academia. I want to say I just want anything from 2010 until current. Uh, they do have some languages, so if you're depending on your EE subject, maybe you'll want something in a different language. Uh, you can also narrow by a specific kind of discipline. And then when you're satisfied with how you've structured your search, you can just click search. And with JSTOR, I have 95 results. Again, great, much better than Google. A lot of the stuff is most likely not available on Google. And so I just scroll down and maybe I want to look at this one right here. So I click on it. Same as EBSCO, it tells me the title right here. It tells me the authors down here. It tells me it's from the Journal of Wildlife Management uh, from 2010. I can look at the PDF. I can email citations to myself. We'll talk a little bit about database citations in a couple of modules um, in the future. And I, I can open the PDF and then download it and save it and then upload it into Google Drive if I want or just keep it on my computer. And that's pretty much the trick with JSTOR. It's a really important, uh, really exciting database to have in a high school, I think. And now you can pause the video as soon as I t tell you the questions for the JSTOR portion of the assessment task. So back to our questions. Uh, oh, before, let's see, um, actually before you do uh, the JSTOR question, you actually need to pause again and answer question five, which I forgot to mention before. So question five asks, what are two things about the EBSCO databases that are useful, interesting, surprising, mm -hmm or tips that would be helpful for other people to know. So go ahead and pause the video, answer that question five about EBSCO. Two things that are useful, interesting, surprising, or just a couple of tips that people should know. Restart the video when you have completed that. Moving on to question number six. For question number six, search the JSTOR database for an article from a field in which you are considering a career. Search the JSTOR database for an article from a field in which you are considering a career. In the answer box, you should put in title of the article, title of the journal, book, newspaper in which it was originally published, and the year of publication. Pause the video while you answer, complete that activity, and answer that question. Restart when you have completed. Question six. 
example of question six here. Education at zoos and aquariums in the United States. Bioscience, 1997. Moving on to question number seven. What are two things about the JSTOR database that are useful, interesting, surprising, or tips that would be helpful for other people to know? So two things about JSTOR that you found useful or that you think others should know about it before they use it. You can pause the video and complete that question before restarting the video. Moving on to Teen Health and Wellness. Teen Health and Wellness is an ex excellent, kind of an unusual database that is, all of the articles are written by the by doctors um, and are reviewed by doctors and they are all kind of in the same style um, and from written by the same company right here but with the assistance and and the the uh, actual authorship of doctors so teen health and wellness has lots of different things it's got some kind of news items personal stories question at answers some video and then over here on the left it gives you some broad categories so let's say you're interested in mind, mood, and emotions. You can click on that. And then here are all of the articles that are associated with mind, mood, and emotions. So let's say I am interested in learning more about the teen brain. I can click on that. And then over here, I've got all these little related, these sections that are part of the big teen brain article. This database is wonderful for health um, assignments, for personal questions for understanding more about what a family member or friend is going through. So I highly recommend that you guys use this one whenever you have a question or are curious about something that's going on in your own lives. And so with that, we will pr proceed on to our next round of questions. Question number eight. Search the Teen Health and Wellness database for an article that could help yourself, a friend, or a family member. And then in the answer box, just paste the title of the article. So again, search this database for an article that could help yourself, a friend, or a family member. And then an example, I pasted in the title of the article called Meditation. And then pause the video while you complete this task. Restart it when you're finished. Moving on from Teen Health and Wellness, the last database or website sort of um, section that I wanted to highlight here is images. So it is not acceptable to just grab images from Google Images and use them in, especially not to use them in academic um, assignments and projects, especially as you go up through your academic career and into college, it is going to be more and more unacceptable. So you need to understand that there are other solutions, that there is something called Creative Commons in which people have actually said, this photograph I've taken or this image I've created, it is, uh, I'm giving it to the public to use however they see fit. And so this is a great way to find images that are in that category. Creative Commons, Image Search, Flickr Commons, which has kind of archival older photographs, and Pixabay, which is kind of similar to Creative Commons Image Search. So you just click on it, and you want to make sure that these two are unchecked, otherwise it's going to think that you want to actually make money off of it or change the image in some way. So if you just want a straight up image, uh, you can type it in here. Let's say I wanted to look up zoos, maybe tigers and zoos or something. All right, so all of these images here have been uh, uploaded and have been labeled as okay to use by the public. So I can click on one, I can visit the page, okay. I can find one hopefully that is available. Okay, none of these are, but you can find one that's available and then I can actually visit the page where it was and then it should tell me information such as who is the name of the contributor, sometimes it tells you when it was actually uploaded uh, and then it usually should give you an ability to download it 
And so here, it, this is the little licensing where this person has said, yes, people can use this as long as they're not making money from it. And this is an excellent way to find images for your uh, projects or your, even from your own personal um, projects that you might do on the web that require some sort of photograph. So those are the, the image websites I'd like for you to explore. And going back to our assessment, for question nine, you should search any of those three image websites that are linked from the research page for an image that represents you in some way. In the answer box, simply paste the link to the image. So search for an image that represents you in some way. And then an example of what that would look like is just simply a link that I can then click on and see something that represents you. And that's it. So when you have finished, you can, this video is almost finished when you're completed with this question. There's just one more question on the form that you can actually answer. Um, there's, it's written out there. And click submit and you'll be completed with video module number two.